Hey guys, Kenny here. We're back in the shop, but today we're going to be doing something a little different. Instead of working on something, I'm actually going to be reviewing my favorite car. It actually might come as a little surprise to you, but it's actually not one of these. It might come as a bigger surprise that it's not the slob. It's actually my M1009 V. So let's go ahead and take it out. I'm going to tell you about it, give you a tour of the quirks and maybe lack of features, take it for a drive, and then after that, I'm not going to give you a Doug score. Cause I'm not Doug and I'm biased. Anyway, let's go. So what is a CUCV or a CUCV? It stands for Commercial Utility Cargo Vehicle. In the 1980s, GM started producing these for the military, not just our military. I believe they sold 70,000 units worldwide to countries like Sudan and Lebeda and Greece, etc. But most of them went to the US military and they were primarily delivered in two forms, the truck and the SUV. The truck, uh, like the M1010 was the ambulance, the M1028 was a people carrier, and of course the M1008 is just the regular truck. They were all one-ton trucks. They had one-ton axles like a Dana 60 up front, 14 bolt in the rear. All of them were equipped with a 6.2 liter diesel. The M1009 shares the same drivetrain as the M1008, yet they only put 10 bolt axles on these, just like the civilian versions. Outside, they're pretty much the same as a regular K5 Blazer with a few changes. We'll start up here on the front. You can see that they come with the notorious uh, Cuck V grill or brush guard up front. You also notice there are shackles, and those are both front and rear, and they're uh, bolted directly to the frame. They use these for lifting the vehicle. I've even seen them drop these out of the back of a C-130 uh, on parachutes on YouTube. Anyway, the everybody always wonders what this is right here. This is actually an infrared headlight. They use these so they could drive them at night with infrared goggles on. It's paired with these four uh, infrared lights, two on the front, two on the rear, and this allowed them to kind of follow the convoy and be able to see the other cars in front of them. The other uh, notorious cock v thing up here is the nato plug behind here is a plug for the uh so you could attach it to other nato vehicles so i guess you can jump start an m1 abram tank or likely just another dead humvee here in the back you'll see that they are equipped with two more shackles and the uh infrared lights that you saw in the front also in the back this came with a detroit diesel 6.2 liter they ran two alternators. They were a 24 volt system, but technically everything on the truck is 12 volts, except for the NATO plug and the starter. Those are both 24 volts. Another thing you'll see about these cuck V's is they have a battery bus right here. And these things are really convenient if you're ever trying to wire anything in. There's one in the, uh, underneath the hood and then one in the back as well. So now we'll go ahead and take you on the inside and show you some uh, specific features that are unique to the M1009. They give you these cool plaques here to show you the exact dimensions of your vehicle in case you ever want to ship it on a C-130. Uh, over here you'll find the switch panel for all your cool lights. So you can actually have all the lights off. Nothing works. Headlights, blinkers, nothing work. You can turn them all on or all off. It's good for saving your battery. Or you can switch it down here to blackout and that turns on all the black light systems, all the infrared lights that I showed you in the outside. If you want to turn on your infrared headlight, that would be that switch too. Inside, there's also a NATO plug in case I guess you need to hook up a radio or something on the inside, I'm not sure. Uh, obviously, there's going to be crank windows. Nothing really is power in these vehicles. Inside, there's also uh, one of those plugs like you saw underneath the hood to hook up some power. And uh, over here is the M16 mounts, or if you're hardcore like me, it's good for your California duster. So while the M1009 is a very unique, pretty cool vehicle, by itself it looks kind of puny. So my goal for this one was to make essentially a resto mod, or my interpretation of how I felt like these should come from the factory. One ton axles, Hummer tires, AC, and kind of dark and clean. And that's kind of what I try to reproduce here. But real quick, before I talk about the modifications that have been done to my truck, first let me tell you about finding an M1009. In the early 2000s, the U.S. government liquidated most of these. However, many, like the first one I bought from the government, were very abused, dented, and plagued with rust. This particular one I purchased about two years ago, and cosmetically it was in rough shape. However, it had no rust on it and virtually no dents. I then spent about a year on the restoration. It was mostly disassembled, 
The paint was sanded down and reshot with a two-part olive drab paint. On the inside, I used a color match bed liner, and then I replaced basically anything that was old on the truck. Every rubber seal and bushing that looked aged. And now I'll spend a few minutes talking about the changes and modifications over a regular M1009. Originally these came with 10 bolt axles and if you've ever seen 10 bolt axles underneath a lifted blazer they do look quite small. This one's had the uh, Dana 60 put up front and a Dana 70 in the rear. I've also obviously added the Hummer H1 tires with 37 inch Bajas on them. In addition to the Dana 70 the rear I've also swapped out two rear disc brakes which really help in the stopping. And we'll continue underneath the hood. Like I said earlier in the video, these came with a Detroit 6.2, originally with only 150 horsepower. With the Banks Turbo Kit on these, they up at about 80 horsepower and 100 foot-pounds of torque, which definitely lets you be able to cruise on the highway. Now the other problem is they only came with a 3-speed TH400 transmission. This one has a 700 R4. And perhaps the best addition in here, living in Florida, is factory air conditioning. I didn't use a vintage air kit. I actually was able to install a factory AC in this car. It's uh, The box is insulated and this pumps out some nice cold air and it makes it much more enjoyable in Florida. Now I told you I was gonna take it for a drive and I did, but we had to keep that part of the video short and here's why. And that's because it's loud in here. But if it drives fine, it'll go 70, why not have the smoothest ride? It's something about being in the truck just feels right. I love these old trucks. And there you have it. They're loud, they have no insulation, they're bumpy, but they're just a blast to drive. I love driving this thing around. I love cruising to the beach in it. And honestly, this gets more compliments than any of my other cars.